With the world becoming woke about data privacy concerns, there is a significant shift by organizations and tech leaders to enforce stricter security measures and privacy policies. With less user information readily available, brands and marketeers are faced with the daunting challenge of gleaning enough information to get a sense of who their users are. In this keynote, Samiha from Apps Flyer will be sharing her insights on how to derive higher ROI and increase business valuation from strategic usage of predictive analytics technology. Please welcome to the screen stage, Samiha Alam, Head of Enterprise Partnerships, C Apps Flyer. Take it away. Thank you so much for uh, the warm introduction. It's a pleasure to be a part of this wonderful event. So a very warm welcome to the digital audience we have today. Uh, let's get started with the presentation. The topic for my presentation is optimization through predictive analytics with Apps Flyer's privacy-centric solution. Next slide, please. Uh, so for those of you who have not heard about Apps Flyer before, we are a SaaS company that helps marketing team makes good choices around their ad spend. For those of you who know us already, a huge thank you for being a, a customer. So uh, before I get into uh, discussing what predictive marketing is, we will discuss a bit about privacy and why is it so important. Now, predictive analytics and privacy are actually inter interlinked. And uh, you might wonder how did it all start? So in, on April 26, 2021, Apple officially put its ADT enforcement into practice. Now with this enforcement, mobile advertisers have officially entered a new era of privacy-centric online advertising. So what essentially this means is that there is a reduction in reliance on IDFE. And by introducing limitation on tracking and targeting, Apple is act aggressively pushing for an online in for the online industry to move into its next step, which is predictive analytics. Okay. So what is privacy and why is it so important? Privacy is a fundamental human right. And at this age, it's fair to say that mobile devices are an organic extension of a person. So what you do on your mobile device is very much your own private business. And hence, by this logic, a user should have control over who has access to the information that he chooses to put out there. But the big question here is now that how did Apple get involved in this whole conversation? In, so now the entire fuzz around privacy uh, created by Apple may seem very, very recent, but Actually, in 2014, Tim Cook spoke about privacy as a company value. And he said at Apple, we believe a great customer experience should come at the expense of your privacy. Okay. And in 2020, Apple took this whole discussion to a new level with the announcement at WWDC. So aside from coming up with a bunch of rules and regulations on what data can be tracked on the phone. Uh, I think my, sorry about that. Yeah. So aside from coming up with like, you know, a bunch of rules and regulation on what data can be tracked from the phone, Apple started actively working on educating users about privacy and how they can control who uh, the data can be shared with. So Apple is talking about privacy. Users are aware of the iOS 14.5 uh, changes on their devices. 
And uh, the iOS 14.5 version has already been launched. So let's look at how consumers are actually reacting to it. 70% of the iOS users are already on the new OS version. And 46% of the users who were given an option to either opt in or opt out of being tracked, 46% of the users actually decided to opt in, which is a very, very good uh, rate. It's higher than what the industry uh, anticipated. So now that we know about the privacy setting and the options that are presented to a user, let's dig into how this impacts the advertisers. Now, there are two major stakeholders when it comes to the advertising landscape. The first one is obviously the consumer and the other one is the advertiser. Now, a consumer wants a good user experience and an advertiser wants to speak to the most relevant segment of the user. And that's where the twin meets. Up until now, IDFA bridged this gap. If we take IDFA out of the equation, we can expect to have lower ad relevance and broken user experience. So what Apple is talking about is end user privacy and that's what the consumers are concerned about. Advertisers are concerned about not being able to have a relevant conversation with their um, with their consumers. So, like I said, the data looks pretty promising. 46% of the users have actually opted in when they were presented with an ATT prompt. But here's the bigger challenge. Only 60% of the users have, 60% of the apps have actually presented the user with that option. Um, yeah. So, now that uh, we know that IDFA collection would be a challenge, not all the users would be opting in. And the second part is that uh, there would be sort of some delay in, in advertisers asking users for permission to opt in. What happens to the users that are not basically uh, opting in and allowing advertisers to, to uh, track the IDFA? Apple has launched its own attribution solution, which is called SK Ad Network, where a consent really doesn't matter. And privacy is a huge part of that conversation. But there are a lot of challenges with the solution that they have presented. A, not all attribution flow are covered. B, the data is delayed there can be up to 64 uh, days delay in you getting data against the campaign that you ran. There is obviously fraud risk because the data is not real time. You can only map limited number of KPIs and the data flow is distributed, which means there is no centralized way of sharing data with the networks and then consolidating all that uh, data together in a format that makes sense to the advertiser. So there is SKR network. There is, the reality is that IDFA cannot be collected as readily as it would have been or it was being collected right now. So what is the next uh, big move? or next big thing that you need to do in order to be able to optimize your campaigns and in order to be able to engage with your consumers through the channel that you feel is the most relevant. Not feel actually that, that you can uh, predict is the most valuable one. So that's where predictive marketing comes into uh, picture. Predictive marketing is not a new concept. Savvy marketers have been leveraging on data to build predictive models for a few years for now. But what uh, Apple's announcement did was it sort of democratized the need. And with Apps Flyer, 
this solution of predictive uh, analytics and marketing became more um, readily av available and affordable to the end consumers that are out there. So for AppsFly solution for iOS 14, what we do is we put privacy at the center of, of the conversation. We cover attribution flows that were not pre that are not being covered with SK Ad Network. And we support SK Ad Network solutions. So we have built a bunch of innovative solutions around SK Ad Network. So talking about our innovative solution around SK Ad Network, we have something called SK360 that analyzes, optimizes, connects, predicts, uh, protects and predicts the lifetime value of a user. Predictive marketing is an approach that will apply data science to forecast which marketing strategies are most likely to succeed. So this involves basically predictive modeling and analytics to draw behavioral pattern, which will tell you information about uh, a user behavior in the future. So it fills in the gaps that is left wide open by the privacy rule. Don't sweat it, we'll explain what this means in the next slide. So look, let's look at how uh, data utilization has evolved over the years. Initially, data was utilized to paint a basic user behavior to answer what happened. Then came the age where data was readily available. So the, the whole analytical part was focused on finding out why did a certain user behavior happen. But again, like we have discussed the whole change in the ecosystem, the focus is on predictive analytics, which is predicting what will happen with a bunch of users so that you're able to make better, better data-driven decision. So, when it comes to our solution, which is predict SK, we use predictive modeling. We use predictive modeling to help our marketeers make more informed decision in three main areas. The first area is retention. You need to know as an, as an advertiser, as, in market, as a marketeer, you need to know how long is the user going to be engaged with your app. The second uh, metric that we predict on is engagement. So we look at how deep a user's engagement was with your product and solution, and then we predict what their future engagement is going to look like. The third, which is probably the most important one, is monetization. So we use a scoring system to basically identify the potential of a dollar value that a user will generate either through watching ads within your app or by making real purchases. So just to take a quick example, let's say you are an advertising puzzle, you're advertising a puzzle game. Your machine learning algorithm learns that users who complete level 10 of your game within the first 24 hours are 70% more likely to make an in-app purchase. Once you have attribution data against it, that these users are coming from channel A or channel B, which you can see on Apps Flyers dashboard, you would be able to optimize your ROAS. So basically how we do predictive analytics, predictive analytics is now a necessity. Traditional BI cannot replace predictive analytics because to get the data to make predictions in traditional BI, you at least need two weeks of time to gather meaningful data. And then you need to prevent your uh, campaigns from getting contaminated. So you can't touch or change anything in that two weeks of time. With predictive modeling, what we do is we identify patterns very quickly. The holy grail is to measure the activity in the first 48 hours and then to correlate it with long-term LTV. So two things, 
which is very, very important to watch out for, A, is that you're collecting accurate data and the volume of data is huge. And B, is that your al algorithm is up to date and, and you are able to scale it up. So identify your KPIs early on and scale with look-alike models. That, that is what would help you make correct predictions. So to wrap it all, all up quickly, predictive analytics lets you know what campaigns will succeed in future. It gives you a full-time funnel perspective. And to make it successful, you should know what data point you should be collecting and the amount of data that you should put into your system to make sure that your predictions are as accurate as it can be. So with that, I would like to end my presentation. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been a great experience speaking.